Hey watch friends, today we're going to be taking a look at this all new model from Zelos. This is the Aurora. This one is going to be officially launching shortly after publishing this review. First, I do want to mention up front, as far as for administrative matters, do note that this is a production sample that's sent into the review. That's important for two reasons. One, if you saw the paid promotion banner, they did send this in and I don't have to send it back. Additionally, and more importantly, I do want to highlight that this is missing a key feature that the production version will have, and that is a hardened coating. So if you see scratches, scuffs, etc., that can be attributed to that. This one is lacking in that coating that will be included. So first, in case you missed it, I did actually already feature an unboxing. If you want to check that out, you can see the aluminum case, the warranty card, and it does come standard with a one-year warranty, all that kind of good stuff. Very nice packaging and presentation, but it's nothing new there if you're familiar with these. All right, so now let's go ahead and dive into the actual specs themselves. First, the case is coming in at roughly 38.5 millimeters from the two o'clock to eight o'clock position. And that is specific to this one. There's actually going to be two different size versions available. The 38 we're looking at today, but then additionally, there is a 42 millimeter size range as well. The bezel does step down, and this is coming in on this variant at 37.1 millimeters. The lugs are going to be a nice strap change friendly, 20 millimeters. The lug to lug on this 38 is coming in at 45.5 millimeters. On the 42 millimeter version, it is, as you'd expect, a little larger, and it's coming in at 49 millimeters, so still plenty versatile. As far as the thickness, again, on this variant, it's coming in on my calipers at exactly 12 millimeters. The stated spec on the 42 is a little bit thicker at 12.4 millimeters. This does feature a flat sapphire crystal, and as you'd expect from Zellos, it does have an inner AR coating as well. The movement. This is coming with a Miyota 9039 movement, so you've got a nice workhorse movement. It is high, um, higher beat, decent power reserve, around 42 hours. Um, it has a hacking, hand winding, all that stuff. But this one has an added party twist. As you can see there, at the 6 o'clock position, this does feature an anti-magnetic cage. So there's actually an inner case as well that does make this uh, anti-magnetic so you can go through metal detectors and those kind of things with significantly less worry about becoming magnetized. As far as the water resistance, this comes standard with 200 meters or 20 atmospheres of water resistance. The weight, size to my six and a half inch wrist, as you can see here, this is only coming in at 122.3 grams. Part of the reason for that light weight Though it is, I would say, well balanced and it's not a complete featherweight like some of the titanium watches, in many respects this reminds me of the Mako Titanium where I shared before that that one wasn't extremely light but it felt nice on wrist. It was well balanced while still feeling uh, like it had uh, some substance to it. And this I, I think is the case here as well and we'll look at the Mako tie later on. But this is a titanium construction that's going to be the case, the bracelet, with the exception of the clasp which I believe is still going to be stainless steel. All right, so now that we have the basic specs out of the way, let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into the model itself. As far as colors, this one comes with a whole host of color options available. In the 38 millimeter size, there's the purple that we're looking at today. There's additionally a black, an ice blue, which is a throwback to the ice Mako, and a venturine, which everyone always loves the venturine dials, as well as a carved teal version or a bluish coloration that's reminiscent of like a Strom kind of dial there. In the 42 millimeter version, there's also going to be a black and a teal, which those are carryovers, but then there's two unique colors. There's an orange and there's also an opal mosaic, which is a for first for the brand as well, and I actually can't recall seeing that anywhere, so that's really slick touch. Uh, actually, I apologize. That is a mother of pearl uh, mosaic, not opal mosaic. As far as uh, the actual texture. The texture is going to vary depending on the variant that you're looking at. Of course, the venturing is going to be smooth glass, but most of the variants are going to have the sand texture that we're looking at today. I would call it a very fine sand. It is definitely not as coarse of a granule as some of the variants that we've seen in the past. It does also have a very pronounced fume, so that gradient effect where it fades from the primary color out to darker, almost black, on the perimeter edge, and I think it's nicely applied, but it is very aggressive, and I think it tends to uh, to subdue it a little bit while still having plenty of pop, especially on this purple variant. On the dial, at the 12 o'clock position, you're going to have a printed Zelos logo, and then down at the 6 o'clock, you will have printing as well, where you have the water resistance, and then anti-magnetic noted. That printing does continue out to the chapter ring, which is going to be recessed, so it's actually a step down in there, and that is in keeping with the construction of a partial sandwich. 
and it does have your numerals as well as your individual minute and second hashes printed all the way around. So nice, great legibility as you'd expect for a somewhat field style watch. Shifting over to the hardware, the hardware on this is what I would describe for the hour and minute hand is going to be a, um, a pallet or a paddle style rather uh, construction for that with a skeletonized base. So you can see it does have a step down and it does have that nice little touch of skeletonization. The second hand is more of like, I don't know, a shovel or what have you kind of construction for that uh, as well. The finishing is going to be polishing on both the hour and minute hand, and then you do have polishing as the primary for the second, and then a nice accent color on this particular variant. As far as the length and width on the handset, the hour hand, I will say it's nicely, just comes out and just barely kisses the inside edge of the index exactly where you'd want, just a tiny sliver of accent so you can get the legibility. Similarly, the minute hand is going to come out and touch the outer side of the index, and then the second hand just rides and glides nice and cleanly over the hashes on the chapter ring. So great legibility there. The dial itself, one of the most unique and distinctive features is going to be that they went with a mix of both applied and sandwich indexes. So at your cardinal positions, your 12, three, six, and nine, you do have nice uh, polished and uh, applied indexes. In between those though, you do have little slits that are actually cut out sandwich style uh, for that. So it kind of hybridizes some of the models we've seen in the past, and of course they've had a multitude with applied indexes, but um, the sandwich is reminiscent of like the swordfish, which that's kind of a signature trait and characteristic there. But we'll look at that further in some comparisons. All of these, as you'd expect from Zelos, are going to be loomed. The predominant loom is going to be C3, and it's an interesting touch here. Between having the mix of applied and sandwich, you do get a different pattern that's applied to that. Additionally, the handset is going to be uniformly C3, but then on the chapter ring, you do have BGW9. I found this to perform adequately. It has not been as much of a loom monster as some of the others, and we'll talk about that further, especially with the minute hands, uh, hand on this, with it uh, being a little bit of a skinnier application. But overall, it is more than adequate for the application of, of loom. As far as the bezel, the bezel is, as we already looked at, going to be set back, and it does have a nice step slope. The construction is going to be brushing all the way around, which is in keeping with the overall watch for that. And it does butt up perfectly to that crystal, which sits ever so slightly proud. As far as the case, the case, you know, some other people have mentioned that this is reminiscent of the swordfish. And in some respects it is, but we'll look at it. It definitely is its own unique style for, for this one as well. That being said, the finish on this, just as with the rest of the watch, is going to be a vertical brushing. So it's brushing all the way around. In this case, it's vertical on the mid case here. And you can see the actual flow for this. It has angular cuts to it all the way around, including as these downturned lugs, it actually flattens out at the bottom and has a nice angle there, which gives it a unique look. And that's part of the distinction of the profile of this versus like the swordfish that we'll look at. As we already talked about, it does have nicely downturned lugs. They do sit slightly proud of the case back. I'd prefer that they be a little lower. If you know the channel, you know I like them to come flush for that so you don't get that flying saucer effect, but I haven't found it to be too bad here. As we've already talked, at, um, talked about in the unboxing, this does have a very prominent lug. So you can see here, they're nice, they're chunky. They don't have a real pronounced taper to them. So they're boxed off there, again, keeping with the angular style, but it does end, uh, add a lot of presence to this overall. Some people like it, some people don't. I honestly wasn't certain how I felt about it with the Starfighter when I first saw that in renders. And as I, I got that on wrist, it's actually become one of my favorite watches. And we'll look at this side by side to see the similarities in the overall lug profile with that Starfighter. On the three o'clock side, you can see it does carry over with integrated crown guards sandwiching that uh, screw down crown, which the crown itself is coming in at 6.9 millimeters. As I already mentioned, it is screw down. It is a signed crown and it is additionally a loom crown as we saw in that footage as well. So nice touches there. The biggest thing though with this and in keeping with the field styling, wanted this to be very easy to grip a hold of and they accomplish exactly that. The milling that's in it is very easy to get a hold of. The crown itself is oversized. It sits very proud of, uh, of the case itself. So plenty to grip a hold of. You're gonna have no problems adjusting this one whatsoever. And that's especially true on the 42 version, which is actually even a slightly larger diameter than on this 38 millimeter version. Shifting over to the case back, the case back, as you'd expect for a watch of this style, is a screw down construction. Additionally, it has a nice mix of finishing throughout. So you're going to see a combination of blasting, polishing, and brush accents throughout. 
the configuration for the screw down has like a keyhole pattern to that. And that's one that I've talked about on some past Zellos watches and some others as well. Really like that configuration. I think that's very good looking. And then the accent touch is going to be a ship in the middle of the case back. Shifting over to the bracelet. The bracelet is coming, of course, at 20 millimeters at the lugs. It does taper, though, down at the clasp to 18 millimeters. The bracelet on this has FEMO end links, which that's something people request all the time, and that's a great feature to see included on this particular Zellos offering. The link construction is going to be H-link, and again, that brushing that's on the rest of the watch carries over here as well. As with most, if not all, Zellos watches, this is going to be retained with screws instead of pins. So nice, easy strap change, uh, bracelet uh, adjustment uh, friendliness there. And then I will have a link if you need a weirder screwdriver or anything there. Do recommend using quality screwdrivers, and please do put a dab of Loctite on there to make sure it stays secured. Additionally, on the back, this does have quick release spring bars, so you'll be able to switch this out, not only the 20 millimeter friendliness, but additionally, this is going to be easy to uh, pop off. As far as the articulation, the articulation on this is just fantastic. It folds over almost completely flat to the case, or actually does fold completely flat to, uh, to the case. And then additionally, it just drapes and folds over completely. The question came up, is this fully articulated? And on the inner side, yes, it absolutely is. The links do go uh, directly up against each other. As for the clasp, the clasp is all new on this particular version. So this is the first time that they have debuted this. It's going to be another fold over, so just a standard uh, for, uh, for that. With double pushers, it does have a mill bridge inside, but the biggest thing is this is going to be another toolless micro adjust, and this is a completely updated style. I do encourage you, if you haven't already checked it out, I not only featured this in the unboxing, but I actually did a dedicated video to this class that I'll have linked down in the description. Do encourage you to check that out, but I will just give you a spoiler there. It's fantastic. Butter smooth from manipulation, easy to adjust, great range there. Really like that a lot. Excellently done. Glad to see that improvement. All right, so now that we have a better feel for the watch itself, let's go ahead and bring in a few comps for different reasons. First, this is the Starfighter we've talked about. You can see the overall kind of presence of the Starfighter. And this one is distinctive because it has the end cuts on the lugs themselves. However, one of the things that you'll notice and one of the things we talked about is look how far out those lugs come and how proud they sit overall. The profile and silhouette of this, if you account for the fact that this has the cut sides, really reminds me a lot of the overall silhouette and profile of the Starfighter. But there's an idea of these. Next up, I wanted to go ahead and show this. This is next to the Swordfish 40. And you can see here, as far as the case shape, you know, it does have a similar flow to it, but you can see different lug cuts, different undercut for that as well. And then, of course, difference at the lug bottoms um, also. So that gives you an idea, though. And this is the Swordfish 40 for sizing. Even though this is a 38, it still has a lot of presence to it. Next up, in keeping with that, here it is next to the Mako. So this is kind of, this is the Mako Titanium. This is another kind of do-all. So whereas this is going to have, again, on the production version, hardened coating just as this one did, I really think these are comparable. And I've got to say price tag wise, we didn't talk about that yet. This is only coming in at $3.99, which actually even undercuts this one, plus adds anti-magnetic and all those things for it. So I think this is just a fantastic buy and value overall for, uh, for this variant. But that gives you an idea as far as sizing and profile, this 40 versus this 38. You can see the dial presence itself is fairly similar, though the overall watch presence is reduced. And then bring this in, this is next to the Batavi Architect. I just wanted to show this, very different style watches, huge difference in terms of sizing, but I wanted to show just the difference in the purple coloration here. You can see how much that gradient fume really adds to, uh, to this as far as changing up the look, and the same thing is true with that texture. I absolutely love this Batavi, but I gotta say I'm really digging this as well, and I think this is much more in keeping with the tool style or the sport style that is intended for this watch. All right, so now that we have all that out of the way, let's go ahead and wrap things up with my personal view of the positives, some critiques, and there are some, as well as the overall summary. First, for the positives, we've already touched upon the price, we've already touch, touched upon how feature-rich this watch is overall, and I've got to say, I think this is an absolutely huge value. Coming in at just under $400 with anti-magnetic, hardened titanium, a Miyota movement, sapphire crystal, I mean, the list goes on and on for that, told as micro-adjust, I, I just think it's a killer value as well as I think it's an absolute spec monster. I can't think of a watch, especially in this price range, that has been more feature packed. The dials, personally, I think they're gorgeous. I absolutely love this purple um, version that we're looking at today, but I think the other variants, Aventurine's always awesome. The carved, uh, carved teal dial I think is really slick as well, so a lot of great choices there. 
The comfort, on wrist comfort, I found to be excellent. Between that bracelet articulation, the nice balanced feel, the lighter weight, uh, across the board, I think it's been very good there, and I've been quite pleased with that. And then the clasp, what more can I say? I've already, again, done a dip video dedicated to this alone. Um, that clasp, I think, is brilliant. I think everyone is going to almost universally love that. And I say almost just because you can't please everybody. But that being said, I really think this is a tough clasp to beat, especially for, uh, for the money. But what about the critiques? First, the minute hand. I will say the minute hand, and we talked about this in the loom footage, I would like that to be just a little bit wider. It's not quite as wide as the base. I think they could have kicked that out, uh, base of the index, I should say. I think they could have done about the same as the hour on that, and that would have given more loom surface area as well as lended to the legibility as well. So that would have been a nice touch. The sandwich. Similarly there, the sandwich cutouts, I think they could have been a little more pronounced. And let's go ahead and bring back, this is the swordfish. You can see just how much wider the swordfish cutouts are. I don't necessarily think they would have had to go that extreme, but I do think they could have gone, gotten away with a little bit more, and I think that would have helped for the contrast, especially on some of the lighter dial variants where you have just a little more offset for that. The clasp, as much as I have raved about this, I will say there are two potential hot spots for this. There's this little hook right here, and additionally, the edges of this are kind of sharp. Um, they're not, you know, cut your hand kind of sharp or anything like that. But I will say, if I wear this snug, I can feel it more than I would like, and it's not the most pleasant experience there. However, if I do um, keep it the way that I would normally wear it, which is just a slightly loose, not flopping around, um, but with that, I don't notice it at all. So I think it's a very minor item. I wouldn't be too scared off on that, uh, unless you'd like to wear your watches really, really tight. And in that case, it might be an issue. And then finally, just personal preference. The logo at 12 o'clock, I personally think that I would have liked to have had, in keeping with the indexes, um, a mirror application for, for that. So have it applied in that mirror like we've seen on some other Zellos watches. But again, that's just a personal opinion uh, for that. But I think it'd be a nice touch. So where does that leave us overall? As the title of this video says, I'm honestly left asking, where do we go from here? We've seen a lot of great values from Zellos, but this one coming at $400 with all of the specs that it has, I mean, it's kind of hard to believe that they were able to pack everything in and still turn a profit, though I'm sure they are. But that being said, this I think is going to be top, tough to top for the overall specs for your money. So with that, I think as Zellos often does stylistically, as well as the overall value, I think this push, pushes the limits of what is possible out there. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I do encourage you, let me know what you think down in the description. Which one's your favorite? What would you like to see differently? Are you leaning 38, 42, etc.? And additionally, if you did like this, as always, smash that like button. And if you haven't done so already, do tap that subscribe button. Always have more content coming for you. Thanks for watching.